Well, let's first things first. Uh, huge win on Saturday. Wasn't that fun? Uh, so excited for Coach Freeze, his staff, uh, their team, our campus. That was that was special to watch. And Dr. Falwell, when I was here the first time, he actually hired me in April before he went home to be with the Lord in May. And I remember him saying that I want our athletic teams to be able to compete on the same playing field as BYU and Notre Dame. And uh, we actually played BYU last year in Hawaii. And I was hoping we'd be first, but uh, we wanted, we figured we'd let Coach Freeze do it. But uh, it was really neat, really neat to be a part of and uh, just a blessing to uh, have a chance to be on this campus where we are trying to pursue excellence. And that's from the groundskeeping crew to the servers at the ROT to the deans and uh, I think the coaches and the students, student athletes here, that need to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. So um, our basketball team is slowly but surely figuring it out. Um, I, I, most coaches are optimistic this time of year and, uh, and I'm in that boat. I, I see a lot of really good things and I also kind of see what we're not and that's, that's where we're trying to improve upon. Questions? Talk about that BYU win. How much does that help you from a recruiting standpoint as well? I mean, just bringing guys into a stadium like that that's filled up, national TV, does, does it help? Does it trickle down to everything else? Yeah, you have social media, right? Yeah, it. Uh, I've seen a few clips. We, we, we've got a uh, – we, we had a big weekend in terms of recruiting, and I think it just helps to our brand. Like, people like it or not, it goes both ways for – whatever's coming out on Hulu and all the mention that uh, I've already heard about that. Well, man, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll believe a narrative that's presented that isn't actually what's experienced. And I think just spending time on this campus, whether you're a recruit, a visitor, um, or you work or go to school here, you kind of get a different dose of the real. And uh, so I, I think just any experiences like that uh, is just something that we can all share in and uh, be thankful for. You talked about the first time you got hired with Dr. Falwell here, April 2007. And, you know, did you think or have you thought at that time or over the years, that just 15 years later, that uh, the, the program, not just football, but basketball, the entire athletic department, how much growth has been uh, made? That, did you think that was possible for the program to make that much growth? Yeah, great question. First of all, you didn't have to mention 2007. It's a long time ago, John. Um, but yeah, I, I think the vision that he had was, it was great, and you know how it is when you hear a vision, you think, oh yeah, that'd be cool. But for it to come to fruition, I, I just, and I'm, I'm thankful that we and others have had the good fortune of being part of, a part of it. I heard, uh, Chris Baird the other day on an interview, he said something about nine of, he's a coach at Texas, nine of their 18 teams played in a national championship game last year. And he said, you finish fourth in the Big 12 and you feel like, you know, you, you don't get an invite to the, to the, the athletic department barbecue. And, uh, and when you heard Joseph say, you know, well, we, we didn't make it last year, we're disappointed. Like, think about it for a second. We were 22 and 11. Uh, had a couple of good wins and uh, chose not to go to postseason in a different tournament because we, we had a higher goal that we had in mind. But that did not mean our group wasn't successful. Like, you look at the kind of young men those, those individuals are, and, like, you're just thankful for uh, what God's done in and through our program and through our uh, athletic teams because there, there's a spirit of unity and a – a collective competitiveness to be great that I think lends to Dr. Falwell's vision and uh, we're, we're going to keep trying to elevate it. Speaking of the NCAA tournament, there's been a lot of chatter from coaches about expanding that and I think the NCAA Transformative Committee has that. Are you in favor of the tournament expanding by I think to take up 25% of teams or do you like it as it is? Yeah, I'm probably going to go against the grain of what you might expect me to say. What do you think I'm going to say? You don't want to expand it. I want to expand it. 
told you I'm right. I've been with you now for like seven, eight years. I kind of know what you're going to ask. I'm surprised you didn't give me the exact numbers. Um, but I'm in, it's getting harder and harder for a mid-major to schedule. I, I mean, just read the articles. The narrative at the high major level is, and if you don't know about the net ranking, you can just, you'll, you'll Google it and I'm sure you'll find some more information. The, the high majors are playing quad ones and quads four, fours because the fours, you have a chance to, in some of those games, to elevate your efficiency stats or ratings. And there's no real deterrent for playing a quad one and losing. So it's hard for a mid-major to be a quad one. Like we don't get those games in league. So we're going to be a quad two or quad three to them. And why take the risk of losing that game? Not saying that they would, but so you'll see all across the country, mid-majors have had a, a really difficult time finishing their schedules. And uh, I, I think it's built for the high majors to manipulate the net. And uh, that's why I'm, I'd be in full favor of expansion. Uh, I'll again reference Joseph's comment. 22 and 11, we had a really good team. We lost to Bellarmine in a really good game, and they they deserved to win. Yet, boy, you go through a season like that, not that we would have been an at-large candidate, but maybe a win or two in the non-conference uh, against Stanford or BYU or something like that. Maybe that would have moved the needle and given us a greater margin for error. There's no margin for error at the mid-major level unless you've done something exponential in the uh, – in the non in the non conference and those opportunities are drying up so absolutely I'm in favor of it I, I don't care if it goes to 72 96 or I heard uh, Scott Drew say 126 is that 64 128 sorry um, yeah so I'd be in favor in terms of the the scheduling part is there value at all and I don't know all the how to get the, the ratings up but is there value to High-end mid-majors scheduling other high-end mid-majors, if nothing more than battle-tested. That's that's right? what we're left with. That's why we scheduled Bryant in uh, the Hall of Fame Classic in Springfield. Uh, they were in the tournament last year, and them or Vermont, depending on which publication you read, are preseason favorites in their league. Oral Roberts, preseason favorite in their league, and we're going there. So uh, we we have we have attempted the Cancun Classic. We're we attempted, when, and I mean this when I say it, almost everyone. And uh, it's, it's the unintended consequence for having a few wins, uh, but it's our lot right now. So we're, Derek Johnston, uh, one of our associate head coaches, he literally spends, uh, I'll say four or five days a week trying to, trying to inquire about different scheduling opportunities. And again, it takes two to tango, so, but it's not for lack of effort. Uh, there's a collision of experience and uh, youth, talented youth that I think we're the benefactor of. Like, like I say, I say this a bunch. So forgive me if it sounds redundant, but our, our guys are standing on the shoulders of those that have gone before them, and there, there is a, a great appreciation for that. So the Kyle Rhodes, Blake Preston's, Darius McGee, Shiloh Robinsons, the guys that have that are long in our program in years. Man, they've done a great job of trying to continue to coach Brody, Joseph, Zach, Ben, um, Colin, and I, I, I think there's a there's a combination of groups that, when they're together, we we look good. Um, still trying to trying to create a, a synergy amongst the starters, the guys coming off the bench, and uh, and maybe guys carving out a a different role than what they had envisioned when they got here, and that's a delicate balance. Uh, but I love our group's attitude. It is a fabulous collection of individuals that are really committed to being a part of a team. Weaknesses, uh, I especially noticed a weakness after I came back from Charlottesville's practice with Coach Bennett. Um, they defend like we hope to, and uh, so we're pursuing a, a different standard that way. You mentioned the trip to Springfield, or is there going to be time to go to the Basketball Hall of Fame up there or anything planned around that at all? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Like, not like I'm getting to Springfield uh, every other day. And right. In December, I think it might be chilly and there may not be anything else to do. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hope I think that's a part of the game 
Uh, and again, it's a privilege to be invited to that. I saw the news of, what was it, uh, McKay Madness coming up this weekend. Uh, could you give some background info on what that's all about? Is that past your bedtime? <laughs> <laughs> Sad but true. Um, yeah, I don't know why we had to call it that. Uh, we, when you go to a football game and you see our students at football games, oh, man, like it's a beautiful thing. So whatever we can do to kind of recreate that in a shorter version of the night, football games usually last three to three and a half hours. If Matt Warner and Joe Yock are calling it, it tends to be a little longer than shorter. But sorry, Nick, I should have included you in that. Emily, York. Anyway, um, I, I hope that we can generate some familiarity. Like in football, they wear helmets. Basketball, they don't. So maybe there's a greater opportunity for connection with our guys, because I think our guys really feel privileged. I think our whole athletic department and, uh, and student athletes have this mantra that we are proud to represent Liberty, and we just want to be one Liberty. And that was just a chance to – students tend to stay up a little later than grown-ups, so we are trying to accommodate some of their bedtimes. I don't know why we got that name, though. Just mentioned how this team's a little bit older now, and you go back to that 1920 team. 1920 oh, 19, 19, 20 20. team with Caleb, Georgie, Scotty, Mayo, and you have a similar number in terms of old players on this roster. Do you sense any similarities to those, those two teams? I'm not going to get tricked by that question because that's going to put the expectation of first round win in the NCAA tournament, and you'll say McKay said. So, yeah, now every team's different, Dame. I, I think you're right. I do see some similarities. Um, we're different in terms of how we play offense because we have Darius. Um, that group was a little bit more uh, reliant and balanced in scoring. Darius can literally go for 30 on a given night. Uh, and he has a really good uh, evaluation of what the defense has given him. So some nights it necessitates him scoring that many points. Other nights they're going to make us have somebody else beat him. Uh, but on the defensive end, that team was – it was a little bigger, more physical than our current team, and that's what we're working towards. So, yes, I see some similarities in terms of age and experience, uh, but I, I do think every team's different, and it is incumbent upon us as coaches to find our strengths and play to them. You mentioned going to the Virginia practice, watching them defend there. Can you kind of expand that a little bit on what you want to see your team get to just defend like they're defending, or is there something – specific you can point out with how, how you want your team to defend this year? Uh, yeah, I just want to be harder to play against. Like It seems like such an arduous process to score a basket against the Cavaliers defense. And I, I know that's a standard, especially given how we've adopted their system. Um, so I, I just think we're still a work in progress. And I, mind you that, you know, they've got some new guys too, but and we can't recreate the size and the athleticism that you – you inherently get when you're at that level. Um, but I, I do think we can be a version of the pack defense that can make us harder to play against than we currently are. A follow up to that, I know Joe mentioned that he's trying to kind of get that balance of his own you know, defense, but then being more of a team defender too. What, what ways do you want to see him do that? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, that, that guy is a special defensive player. He owns it. And he takes as much pride in that in the floor as most people do off the shine they get when the ball goes in, in the hoop. And he's just such a selfless player. Uh, how, how does he get better? Uh, you know, he has a tendency to, to try and do too much uh, because of how much he owns it. So just being a little bit more disciplined. But, I, look, I trust him. And – Sometimes, like, we get in this lane of not wanting our guys to make a mistake or to play perfect. Like, that never happens. We don't live our lives that way. We can't go through our days without a, a wrong thought or action or some kind of scene in our story that we would have done differently. Well, a basketball game is similar. So I, I want those guys to play in freedom. And But I trust him enough that he can go outside of the system and – still make a difference that impacts positively to our group. You know, Coach, I know we talk a lot about what Darius does on the court, but what are some of the things that he does off the court that help you as well as the team? Well, he came back. <laughs> that helps us. 
I, I, Darius is unique. He's, he's, we've got a couple of guys, I think, I call them generational. I, I don't know if I'll coach another Kyle Road anytime soon uh, because of his leadership gift. Darius McGee is as humble as the day is long. He, you guys, he could literally have gone anywhere. He, he won't say this, but I know he could have taken and signed a pro contract days after the season ended last year. Like who, who doesn't want to play for money for something they've invested nearly their whole lives in? So his humility is infectious. Uh, I think, I think his ownership in, hey, I'm not where I want to be yet as a basketball player is a great testament to our guys about being process oriented, not outcome based. And I, so, and I think he's a great representative, uh, not perfect. He needs to sleep more. Um, I can give you a list of those things too, but, uh, but I, I love him. I love him. His teammates love him. And I, I'm really glad that we get another year to enjoy together. What motivation or impact then does that have on you personally and your coaching staff? In what terms? In terms of being as good as you can be, if that's the attitude he has. I wake up motivated. Like that, that doesn't. I'm inspired by our guys and their selflessness and their willingness to be a part of something bigger than themselves. I, I want to win every game. I want to. I want to be in the Final Four. I, I don't. I don't think you can do this from the seat that we as coaches are in, and not want to be the best. Not want to experience the NCAA tournament. And once you get there, it, it it's. It's a matter of having a couple of three good weekends. I've touched it when I was at Virginia, maybe a little bit uh, here, but there's more for us. And the day that I don't think we can do it at the highest level or um, I'm not motivated to be the best version of myself and give away uh, what I possess, then, then I'll do something differently. But uh, I love being around our guys. That's inspiration enough because you want to give them everything you got because you want for them what you've experienced yourself and what they dream about. And Brody had talked about how the guys just are kind of tired of practice. They want to get – He said that? Not in that way. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, have you seen that angst from them to just want to go play in a game already? Oh, yeah. yeah. These are the dog days. Coach Johnston referred to it. Like, we've seen – we know what we're going to do out there. And, uh, and they like each other enough. And there's a little bit of trash that goes back and forth. But, like, we're ready to continue on and get to the games. And we scrimmage Georgetown this weekend. That'll be a really good test for us there. They've got an uh, influx of uh, transfers, talent that, uh, you know, that is, a, again, a testament to what our guys have done. Because when we first got here, we, we were scrimmaging people like us or even some Division twos, which were healthy for us, don't get me wrong. But now, even though we can't play – a lot of high major teams, like we get opportunities to scrimmage them. So I think it says that we've come a little bit a ways, and I think our guys are really anxious to get to those games.